Welcome. You're working on 210. That's why you're working on this. Hope your day is going well. Let's check out what's going on here. Now, some of this stuff you can handle no problem. Determine the magnitude of the acceleration of King Ka. You got a bunch of givens up here, so uh, that's your business. That's old news by now. So doing this sort of thing where from rest uh, to a speed of, in a time of, this is pretty easy to figure out this acceleration. And of course, the answers are at the bottom of the page. Blinking light should be pretty good to go. This is the start. You can call this the uh, initial time. And then, of course, you want to get over to the final time during the acceleration only. This is during only the straightaway acceleration, which we saw in that video in the lab. So don't worry about once this thing goes up that hill. We're not thinking about that. We're just thinking about if you've ever been to the ride, basically the ride starts somewhere over here and does a, a strong linear acceleration forward before it goes up the hill. So that's the part that we're concerned about. All right. G's we talked about. We talked about that in the lab too. So uh, instead of 10, we're making it 9.8. That's actually more exactly what it is. The two sig figs is what it is. And then four should be easy. Five, however, may give you a little bit of a headache. So let's sort this out. You have to sketch the following. If you notice here, this says scalar graphs. Now these graphs are scalar graphs, which means direction doesn't matter. We don't care about positive or negative. Basically, what this means is we absolute value everything. So if you have any negatives, you know, it goes in the absolute value, it comes out positive. That doesn't mean a graph can't go downhill. Don't be fooled by that. Downhill, for example, on this graph would just mean that the speed is decreasing. It does not mean that it's negative. So let me erase that one because that is not the actual graph for this problem. Now, these scalar graphs, this then is distance, speed, magnitude of acceleration. Well, conveniently, you already figured out the magnitude of acceleration up here in question two. That came out to 16 meters per second squared, rounded. And so in regions physics, acceleration is always constant, or we assume it's constant. And beside, we have a comment up here that says constantly accelerates. And so all that really does for you, this comes into play when you're dealing with your graphs. So constantly accelerates is not a given unto itself, but you can use that one when you get down here and you need to plot your acceleration or magnitude of acceleration versus time graph. So anyway, the acceleration was 16. So basically, uh, it's real good to think about what we call boundary conditions. Let's see here. A little hard to write, so stick with me. Boundary conditions boundary condition what that means the boundaries are the beginning and the end boundary conditions that's the beginning of the end beginning end the end so what we mean by that is how does the problem start how does the problem end and so here boundary conditions really are the initial data point and the final data point on these graphs for example the initial acceleration well we know the acceleration started at 16 meters per second squared. So at a time of zero, the acceleration was 16. Maybe we'll put a data point right here. These are just made up axes. We'll call this 16. All right. So that data point is at a coordinate of zero time, comma, 16 acceleration. Zero seconds, 16 meters per second squared. What is the final boundary condition? Well, at a time of this problem ended at 3.5 seconds, that's when the problem ended. So if we go over to 3.5 seconds, so that's about wherever, we can make that up. That can be here, 3.5 seconds. The acceleration is still 16 meters per second, so we can put a dot there. That one, the data point is 3.5, comma, 16, so 3.5 seconds, comma 16 meters per second squared. And of course, the last question that remains is how do we connect these two? We got lots of options. It can go straight across, it can curve. You know, what, what are we gonna do here? Well, that's where we go back to our blue comment before. Up here, constantly accelerates. That means acceleration is the same the whole time. So, boom, we're good to go. There's our acceleration, magnitude of acceleration versus time graph over the first three and a half seconds. Great. Okay, let's go to our speed versus time graph. Now, again, 
I invite you, think about your boundary conditions. At time zero, over here, zero comma, what's the speed? Well, the speed at zero seconds is zero. It starts from rest. The VI was zero. So here's our first boundary condition, the data point right here. How did the ride end? Oh, well, it ended at three, well, the part that we care about ended at 3.5 seconds. And the speed at that point was, you see up top, 57 meters per second. So we come back over here. You can put it wherever you want here. We can call this 57. So our other boundary condition is 3.5 comma 57. That's 3.5 seconds comma 57 meters per second. The units actually are there. A little hard to write here. So connect those two. That dot is right about here. Now, how do we connect these two? Let's go back to our blue pen to connect. We got some options here. I mean, one option is it goes straight up. Another option is it kind of curves like this. Another option is it kind of curves like this. You know, which of these is correct? The best way to determine this, the way that I want you to determine this, is called slope gain. Run that slope gain. Here it is. Here's slope game. You ready? Slope. What does the slope of a speed versus time graph represent? Well, you should know by now, delta V over T, V over T, delta V over T, that's A. The slope is acceleration. Okay, good. That's our first bullet point. Our second bullet point. Do we know anything about the acceleration? A equals... As it turns out, yes, we do. We have a whole graph on it. What do we know about it? The same thing they said up here. The acceleration is constant. So acceleration is constant. It's called running that slope game. Constant. I'll just put a C-O-N-S-T for constant. Therefore, these three dots are shorthand for therefore. Connect these two comments right here. If slope is acceleration and acceleration is constant, what can we then conclude? That's right, that the slope, I'll just put SLP, the slope is constant. C N S T. Save us a little bit of writing there. The slope is constant. And in these three, among these three choices, which one has a constant slope? only the one that is straight constant slope means constant steepness means straight line and so what does this graph look like boom right here that wasn't that straight but you got the idea <clears throat> direct yo all right last one d verse t let's look at our boundary conditions again okay at time zero how far has king the car gone zero zero seconds zero meters so there's our data point. At a time of 3.5 seconds, that's where our problem ends. That's what we care about. How far is King the Ka gone? Well, you did that in question four, and that came out to 10 to the fourth centimeters. Oh, I'm getting slick with you right there. Okay, that's uh, 10 to the fourth times 10 to the minus two. That's 10 to the two, so that's 100 meters right there. Okay, so we need a distance at 100. So the coordinates of our final boundary condition are 3.5 seconds, comma, 100 meters. Okay, and so we put a little dot there, 3.5 and 100, right about there. Okay, good. Now our final question on this, how does it connect? Does it go straight? Does it curve up this way? Does it curve down over this way? And you know who's gonna do it for us again. You know who's gonna do it for us again. That's right. It's that slope game. Slope game. Here we go. Slope. What does the slope, I'll just put SLP. What does the slope of a D versus T graph represent? 
well is delta V over T, which comes out to speed V, your average speed V. Do we know anything about V? Why, yes, we do. It's right here in this graph. We know that V is, don't tell me it's constant. Look at the V graph. It started out at zero and it went up 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 30, 30, 40, 40, 40, 40, 50, 57. V was increasing. No doubt V is increasing. Therefore, a little break here so we don't confuse the two. Therefore, slope is speed. Speed is increasing. Therefore, the slope is notice i'm not introducing any new words here slope is increasing that's it slope is increasing that's an i there beneath that e. there we go slope is increasing oh which one of these three has an increasing slope the one that's getting steeper which one is getting steeper the one that's curving upward the right answer to this question is here. I missed a little bit. There we go. That's called a power graph, by the way, not an exponential. A little hint, the three graphs should not look the same as each other. Like they should not be at the same spot with the same shape, all the rest of that. So that's just a little kind of backup hint on what's going on. All right. So that's pretty good. The rest of this assignment is the same thing. Mr. B is driving, sees a cat in the road, hits the brakes, make you blinking light. So here's the initial time when I'm driving fast. The final time will be over here when I'm going slow. So you're going from fast to slow, figure that out. How long is asking for the time? No, separate paper. You have to actually do these on a separate paper. Now, assuming forward is positive. It's not a bad idea. So if I'm driving this way, I come over here and put a little plus sign with that so we don't mess that up. Assuming forward is positive, sketch the following vector and scalar graphs. Okay. Well, you can figure out the acceleration. The acceleration here will turn out to be a constant. Now, the acceleration is you can imagine as I hit the brakes, I have a big space and then a smaller space and so on. I don't want to draw the whole thing for you. But it goes big space to smaller space to smaller space, which means the acceleration is to the left, which means the acceleration is in the backward direction, which means the acceleration is negative. However, that negative is recorded on not all graphs. That negative can be recorded on the vector graph, go down to the negatives. That negative cannot be recorded on the scalar graph, you just do the absolute value of it over here. You just do the positive version of it. So that one will basically be the same line, but up in the positive. So I don't want to give you too much about it. Constant acceleration already gives away a lot right there for the acceleration graphs. That's pretty straightforward. Okay, next we can look at the speed graphs. Here, you really must be mindful of the boundary condition. Boundary conditions also apply over here to the acceleration graph. Sure, sure, sure. But the boundary condition for the velocity graph, how does it start? Well, it starts moving forward, which means it has to be up here in the positive somewhere. And how fast does it start? Well, it says right here, here's your VI. Here's your VI. So your boundary condition at time zero, your initial velocity is 25. So your dot is right here. That's at zero seconds, comma, 25 meters per second. What's your final boundary condition? Well, how long does it take? That's a final time there. And we figured that out in question seven. It says 3.6 seconds. So that'll be somewhere over here. And what's the final speed? Comes to rest. There's your VF. So there's a zero. So your final boundary condition is at 3.6 seconds, comma, zero meters per second. Good. You just have to figure out how to connect these two boundary conditions now. Run your slope game. You don't know what to do? Go back and watch the video from before. Run your slope game. Slope 
equals something. That something equals, you got to look at its graph and see what it's doing. Then all you do is connect these two. The slope becomes that new something. And uh, that will tell you how to draw this graph. Now keep in mind when you are drawing your speed versus time graph, this entire graph is in the positive, except for the last one, zero. But it's in the positive. So the absolute value of positive is still positive. This does not suddenly become an uphill graph. You still have your boundary conditions of 0, 25, and 3.60. And so it's important to think about your boundary conditions. Otherwise, you start getting crazy with this, like, oh, maybe it needs to flip upside down. No, no. Finally, let's look at the boundary conditions for the displacement versus time. At time 0, there is zero displacement. That's where we're starting the problem. So actually, our boundary condition initially is at 0, comma, 0. Where does it end? They told us a distance of 45 meters, and we know the time is 3.6 seconds. So actually, our final condition is at 3.6, comma, 45, which we can make here. That's 3.6, comma, 45. That's our final boundary condition. Now, in this case, you have to connect those dots. How do you connect those two? Just like we did up above, run that slope gain. I really want you to do it for yourself here. Slope of this graph represents something. Look back. That something is doing what? Basically, it's remaining the same, it's increasing or it's decreasing. Therefore, connect the two. The slope is doing whatever that is. That was that same connection over here. And that tells you which graph to choose, whether it's a straight up, whether it's a curve up, whether it's the curve down. Nice little set of reasoning right there, okay? This is very good for you to work through. Take your time to work through it. Okay. And by the way, when you come over here to do distance time, the entire graph is in quadrant one. It's all positive, which means do your boundary conditions again over here. It's the same boundary conditions, 0, 0, 3.645. So the graph will not actually look any different. Okay, let's keep on going down here. Oh, there's Fancart in all her glory. She used to have that nice ring around her. It used to work and everything. Anyway. This is a nice set of questions right here. Do these out. By the way, you see 13H right here? That's a, uh, H is kind of like honors. 13H is like an honors sort of question or extra or hard or however you want to interpret it. I don't care. Um, by the way, 12, 13, 14, you can either explain them or you can. What is this craziness? I haven't even told you. Did I tell you on the front page? Oh my goodness, what is this craziness? This craziness is show all work, including the equation and substitution with units. So with Tiasu, so with Tiswu, so with Tiswu. Hmm. Anyway, that's Regents lingo right there. And take it seriously because it's good lingo for solving any problem. Show everything. That's why you need a separate paper. For 12, 13, 14, you might be able to explain these without having to formally set up equations. You could formally set them up, but you don't have to. Okay. So fan cart, by the way, started off. Hmm. She's given an initial velocity of 7.5 meters per second to the right. Okay. Fan, this is going to be a tricky one over here. They also tell you. Fan cart is set to undergo a steady acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared to the left. Well, I don't really care which way. Oh, no, I do care. I told you to make right positive down here. So we can come over here and put a little note for ourselves. We can call right positive, which, of course, means left is negative. You don't have to write it out. It's implied, but if it makes you feel better, go ahead. They already told you the acceleration. So you can do your boundary condition. Boundary condition the heck out of these. Boundary condition this thing. 
So it was 1.5, here it is, meters per second squared to the left. So what that means down here is left is negative and it's at 1.5. So at zero seconds, it's over here at negative 1.5. There's your first boundary condition, zero comma negative 1.5. And then, what happens over time? Well, I don't know if they gave you the full, yeah, here. All these questions are talking about a 10 second time interval. And the graphs actually are over the 10 second time interval. So your final condition here, your final boundary condition is gonna be at a time of 10 and the acceleration is steady. So it will still be negative 1.5. So 10 seconds, comma, negative 1.5 meters per second squared. Cool. All right. Now, they tell you it's steady. So you should know what to do with this acceleration graph. Plus, we're in Regents Physics. And in Regents Physics, there are no jerks. Now, I would recommend once you do the vector graph, hop on over and do the scalar graph. The scalar dra graph is just the absolute value of it. So the vector, the uh, vector graph was negative 1.5. So the scalar graph is just going to be positive 1.5. That's all. So your boundary conditions are similar, 0, positive 1.5, and then 10, positive 1.5. And you should be able to connect those pretty easily. The boundary condition is really going to come into play now when you're dealing with your velocity versus time graph boundary condition they told you up here that the initial velocity is 7.5 meters per second to the right the initial velocity is 7.5 meters per second to the right watch closely okay that means fan cart starts out at zero time with a velocity of 7.5 to the right, which by the way, we've defined to be positive. So here is fan cart's starting velocity. The boundary condition is zero seconds, positive 7.5 meters per second. Cool. Now where is the final condition? Well, I believe you solved for it up here. Determine fan cart's velocity at the end of the 10 seconds. You did this in question 10. And in question 10, you found the answer to be negative 7.5 meters per second. Which, of course, if right is positive, left is negative. Negative 7.5. Ooh. What does that mean? That means at a time of 10 seconds, somewhere over here, fan cart will be going negative 7.5. Here is her other boundary condition. See how important these boundary conditions are? They can guide you. Seven, 10 seconds, comma, negative 7.5 meters per second. Great. Now we just have to think about how these two connect. There are some reasonable choices and some unreasonable choices. Probably most reasonable would be a straight through, a curve over, a curve under. I mean, you could get like an up and a down and an up and some other craziness. But all this craziness is put to rest when you just decide to run your slope game. Slope game. Okay, let's go. What does the slope represent of a delta V over T? Of course, it represents acceleration. Do we know anything about acceleration? Yes, we do. In fact, you're going to have it right here. In fact, not only are you going to know whether it's increasing, decreasing, or constant, you're going to know if it's positive or negative. Because in vector graphs, you can actually see if it's positive or negative. So you're going to get a nice little result from this picture here. Finally, you will then connect these two. You will do your therefore statement. Therefore, slope is whatever you came up with here. Once you see that, boom, connect the dots, you're done. Then, come do your scalar graph. 
treat it the same way. It's a little bit trick. This one's a little bit tricky. This one's a little bit tricky. At zero, it's going positive 7.5. There's your initial boundary condition. At 10, it's going negative 7.5, but you don't get negatives. You have to make it an absolute value. You gotta make it a magnitude, which means negative 7.5 becomes positive 7.5. So at 10, you go to positive 7.5. And then how do you connect these two? Be careful here. I don't want you running the slope game all over again for your, you did it already over here. What you have to do is think about, was this graph positive anywhere? If it was, you just keep it as is. Was this graph negative anywhere? If it was, you got to make it positive. So you're going to fiddle around with this one, and it's going to look a little funky. Not that funky, but a little funky. Finally, let's talk about boundary conditions for this displacement first time. And then uh, that's enough talk. All right. At the starting time, it has covered zero displacement. Okay. Boundary condition, zero seconds, zero meters. Cool. At the final time, at 10 seconds in, what's the displacement? Well, I believe I had you solve that. Yes, here it is. What is fan cart's displacement at the end of the 10 seconds? You could run your equations on this, or you could explain it, but equations are good for you here. And question 14, you'll find the answer is zero meters. So wait a minute. Don't come be silly, make another dot right here. This is the final boundary condition. This is 10 seconds later, so you're going to have a data point at 10 seconds, comma, zero meters per second, and that data point will go right here. How do you connect these dots? Hmm, you could come straight across. You could do some weird curve up, curve back. You could do an arc. You can do something underneath the axis. We got a lot of choices here. Again, you want to run your slope game. This one will also be a little bit tricky, and that's okay. I want you to struggle with it. Slope over here, of course, you know, D versus T. Slope represents velocity. Do we know anything about velocity? Yes, we do. In fact, what we know is expressed right over here in this graph that I haven't drawn yet, but you will. Hint, the velocity does two things. It does one thing until it gets to the axis and then another once it goes beyond it. You're going to have to connect your slope to those two things. What is the slope doing in the first half? What is the slope doing in the second half? Again, you may have a little struggle on this one. Embrace the struggle. Force yourself to think about it because when we talk about it in class, it will make more sense to you. Finally, we run over and do our distance first time. If this whole graph is in the positive, then this whole graph looks the same. If it's in the negative, you're going to have to flip it up into the positive. But this one won't actually be too bad. Um, there is a, a little bit of actually, <laughs> let me pause. Let me not say too much about this one. There's a midline here. The front half of this, you'll feel okay. The back half of this is funky. The back half of this is funky, and that has to do with the fact that this is a distance graph. This really would be, this graph in particular right here would be an H-level graph as well. So don't lose sleep over this graph. All right. Then there's one more set of these for a ball that rolls up a hill and back down. It's pretty similar to the one we just saw with fan cart and one we did in the notes. So try this out. Uh, this is going to take you a little time, but it's worth it. Invest yourself in this, and uh, you'll basically be pretty much done with Unit 2. Got a little more details to go through. This covers a whole lot of it. All right.